theswirlworld.com podcast episode 122 the swirl world interracial diverse beautiful Today's shout out goes to the Swirl World. That's right. I'm sending a shout out to my girls, Adrian London Leach and Rachel Robinson of the Swirl World. We have been busy, busy, busy over in the Swirl Nation putting together the best content we can come up with to serve you, the amazing Black woman. We've been busy, busy, busy over in the Swirl World putting together content designed to make your life better as a swirler. We appreciate you, Black woman, and we celebrate you and the diverse men who love us. Over in the Swirl World, we have some amazing Facebook pages, so go and check us out at the Swirl World and also 50 Days of Dating. And if you haven't heard by now, our girl Rachel got married. That's right. She got married March 5th this year in Las Vegas. And what that means is we'll be launching 50 Days of Marriage in June. Now, today's broadcast deals with a subject that I covered in a Facebook Live. I did a series entitled Vetting 101. And on this particular day, I asked the question, are you a desperado? In this broadcast, I'm going to define what I mean by that term, and then I'm going to share what I hope are some nuggets to help us look at ourselves and make sure that we don't fall into that category. Listen, and feel free to shoot me an email at aswirlgirl at theswirlworld.com and let me know what you think. In the meantime, let's check out the show. Keep listening. Hey everybody, how are you? This is Michelle Matthews Calloway, also known as A Swirl Girl, coming at you again on behalf of theswirlworld.com, where we celebrate Black women and the diverse men who love them. I am coming with another episode of Vetting 101. So okay, let's get to today's content and let me go back and define vetting. Vetting is simply an appraisal. It's an assessment. It's a determination of whether or not someone is being accurate and authentic. So vetting is that assessment, that appraisal, that determination of someone's accuracy, validity, and authenticity. And we've been talking about how vetting is a two-way street. It applies to us as well as the person we're attempting to vet. And that at ground zero, everything begins with us. It begins with us knowing our worth and our value and what we bring to the table, what we bring to a relationship. But in order to ensure that we're not fooled, and this whole series came out of a meme that we posted on the blog on April Fool's Day that said, never be fooled by a kiss and never allow a fool to kiss you. In order for that to happen, you have to vet properly. So we've been talking about vetting. We started out with the who, what, when, why, uh, and where of vetting. And then we got into the how. And in that how, we talked about you should have a no-fly zone. And in that no-fly zone is your toolbox. It's your standards, your boundaries, your negotiables, your non-negotiables, your deal breakers, and also your overarching philosophy of life. And we define philosophy as a set of ideas about how to do something or how to live. And we talked about that and then we broke it down a little bit and got into mindset and defined mindset as a collection of attitudes about life or a person or a thing. And then we went a little more in detail of, ad, of uh, mindset and defined attitudes as a collection of beliefs about a person or thing that is expressed in your behavior. And so you see how the layers just build up. We have that foundation of our philosophy. Then we get into the mindset and then we get into attitudes and the attitudes are those settled uh, collection of beliefs that's expressed in our behavior. So we talked about having a scarcity mindset or attitude that makes you believe that there are no good men who are available 
or that you have to settle for bad treatment because of the scarcity. When you look at the population, just from a statistical standpoint, there are over 7 billion people on this planet and all you need is one. So don't buy into the myth of scarcity. Don't buy into the myth that there are no good men available or women because there are some guys uh, who tune in. To Don't buy into that myth. There are good people who will meet your standards, who will observe your boundaries, who will uh, be people that you can negotiate with, who will observe your non-negotiations. We talked uh, about the scarcity and said sometimes the scarcity, the quote unquote scarcity, is based on our lack of um, really getting out there and putting our, you know, getting out of our comfort zones and going where the people are or even engaging in online interactions. And Ginger, uh, I don't believe she minds me saying that she was on our podcast. She's been a guest on our podcast. She and her boyfriend, they met online in a Facebook group. And it was interesting because they vetted one another. He vetted her. He determined her authenticity, her accuracy and validity. And he did that by observing how she conducted herself online and how she conducted herself in the group. She didn't post sexually suggestive photos and she didn't, you know, use a lot of raunchy language and descriptions. And that stood out to him in a group of women who were doing just that. And it's so true. Why stay in a pond when you have an ocean? He observed her. He vetted her. And then when he did approach, she vetted him that she took note of the fact that he didn't call her baby. He called her by her name and he was very polite in his um, the emails that he sent her. And even when they moved off of online and began to talk on the phone, et cetera, she had standards in place. She had uh, a threshold that he had to meet. And we talked about how you have to have this preset. You have to have it already determined in your mind. And you have that because you know your worth and you know your value. And I've been sharing this quote from Zig Ziglar. If you aim at nothing, you hit it every time. If you don't have any standards, if you don't have any boundaries, if you don't have any negotiables and non-negotiables, if you don't have any deal breakers, then you're susceptible to anything. You allow any kind of behavior. So they vetted each other and now uh, they have a beautiful, solid relationship. So are you a desperado? I asked the question today, are you a desperado? And people who are desperados are people who are desperate and they engage in rash behavior um, that more often than not is not in their best interest. You know, you think about from the Westerns, the desperado rushing into the bank, you know, trying to rob the bank, he usually winds up getting shot. And when you're a desperado in dating relationships, that's what happens, the equivalent pretty much of getting shot. And I asked that question because yesterday we talked about scarcity, the mindset that makes people believe that there are no good women or men left. And then it goes a little deeper when you start getting into the mindset of desperation. Desperation means it's a state of, of despair, typically one that results in rash or extreme behavior. And yeah, I have to ask that question, Desperado, because again, when you think about your attitudes are based on your settled way of thinking about things and it's reflected in your behavior. If you're a desperado, if you're desperate, if you have a mindset that operates from a state of desperation, then you, as I said, you set yourself up to be abused and to be exploited and you don't vet well because you allow any and everything to occur. You don't adhere to any standards because you're moving in desperation. You're moving because you think you have to. You're accepting uh, certain things in a relationship because you think you have to. You're desperate. You feel like, oh, if I don't do this or if I don't accept this, or if I don't uh, let this guy do you know, what he wants or have his way, then I'm going to lose him. And so that desperation feeds off of the scarcity mindset, because first of all, you think there's no good people left. 
And that makes you reduce your standards or uh, not set any non-negotiables. And one of the non-negotiables that I've been talking about is that it should be an automatic non-negotiable or a deal breaker rather, I'm sorry, a deal breaker. And that's the thing that if that person has that, they automatically are disqualified. You also attract people who take advantage of the desperation. And we said that when uh, desperation and scarcity, I believe, has a scent. It's just like perfume. You can, you know, when someone puts perfume on, you you smell it. Uh, even if it's a subtle hint, if, uh, you know, they may not have doused themselves in it, but if they have it on, you get close enough, you can smell it. And it's the same with scarcity. It's the same with desperation. You give off a scent. And what a man will do when he smells that scent of desperation, it's going to be one of two things. It's either going to be to close in for the kill. And when I say the kill, I mean take advantage, hit it and quit it. Bam, bam. Thank you, ma'am. And I'm on to the next one. Or if he's at least a man of honor, he's going to run in the opposite direction because desperation screams clingy. It screams cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. It it screams uh, fatal attraction. It screams all of those negative things that people don't want in relationships. No one wants to be made to feel like, you know, someone else's whole world revolves around them, especially when you just meet them. Desperation means getting a hundred phone calls in a row or text messages all day long. It, it means irrational behavior. It means, you know, uh, why didn't you text me back? Why didn't you call me? All these things that make people pull away from you rather than draw them to you. Desperation means that I'm going to settle for being second or even third or fourth. It means I'm going to settle for being just a booty call in somebody's phone that they can call at 11 and 12 at night and come over. It means that I'm going to take the crumbs that they offer me because they're married or they're in a committed relationship and they're stepping out on the person they really supposedly care about. The one who shares their last name and their address. That's what desperation will do. And it stems from a mindset. It stems from a set of beliefs. And what we want to do is break that mindset. We want to master our mindset. And it all starts with us. If we have uh, poor relationships, if we can look at back at the last three relationships and they ended poorly, what's the common denominator? The common denominator is me. So we have to do the work. We have to examine our attitudes. We have to examine our mindset. We have to examine the fact of whether or not we're really properly vetting. Have we set some standards? Have we established boundaries? Do we have factors that we consider to be negotiable, which means I'm flexible, or non-negotiable, which means, no, this is not up for debate. This is not up for discussion. It is what it is. It is what I've outlined. Have we established some out and out deal breakers? Physical abuse is a deal breaker. Somebody putting their hands on you is a deal breaker or using abusive language or being demeaning or belittling. You don't subject yourself to that kind of treatment. That's a deal breaker. But in order to set that, in order to establish what those are, you have to know your own worth and your own value. Nobody uh, can do that but you as far as originating from you. But if you don't set your worth, then someone else is going to establish it and they're going to determine that, oh, you're not worthy of good treatment. You're not worthy for me to talk to you in a nice tone of voice or a kind tone of voice. You're not worth being made someone that I commit to by being the only person that I'm involved with. You have to determine what kind of behavior you will accept, what kind of behavior you determine is allowable. And you do that when you know your worth and you know your value and you have the right mindset. And one of the things that we talked about from the onset about vetting is that determination for accuracy and authenticity and not just listening to what's being said, because it's very easy to tell you what you want to hear. But what's not being said? 
What are the words behind the words? What are the actions? Do they line up? Do they coincide? Are they authentic? You know, if someone tells you that, oh, I'm the easy, most easygoing person you ever want to meet, and yet they exhibit road rage or rudeness, that's, that doesn't coincide with being easygoing. But you have to pay attention. We talked about the red flags, the yellow flags, the cautionary things that should make us pause and say, wait a minute, hold up. Something's not quite uh, right. This is not lining up. But as Ginger said, you have to take the time. And how can you give more attention to an inanimate thing like a car or a house and do research, but not to a person that you're thinking of getting into a relationship with? That's not a good mindset to have. That's not a good mindset. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to delve into mastering your mindset, understanding our worth and value and behaving in a corresponding manner. Because, see, it's a two way street. You know, you have to ask yourself the question, would I date me? Am I someone uh, of that someone would want to date? What are my behaviors uh, exhibiting? What kind of aura am I projecting? Is it scarcity? Is it desperation? So what did you think? Are you a desperado? I certainly hope not. But even if you heard some things that kind of made you say, ouch, that's okay. Because in the swirl world, our overarching mission is to see Black women live their best life. That means we all have room to improve. And once we know something, once we see areas of improvement, we can be about making those things right. Stay tuned for additional broadcasts covering Vetting 101, as well as our regular podcast episodes where we chat with interesting people about all things swirling. Until the next episode, we'll see you on the flip side. Keep swirling. Thanks for listening. Make sure to like The Swirl World on Facebook and subscribe to the blog at theswirlworld.com. Head on over to iTunes and subscribe to the podcast or listen directly from our Facebook page. We can also be heard on SoundCloud and Stitcher Radio. The Swirl World. Interracial. Diverse. Beautiful.